Friends of Rock Nation, um, we are here back again, uh, man in studio, a legend. I'm not going to lie, I mean, I've been following this band for so long. And actually, I've been following this interview for a really long time, uh, <laughs> just to uh, meet in the right time, actually, to sw- speak with Jess. And um, for who does know them, uh, Jess Matheson here with me in studio is the voice and guitar in a cam mode, a uh, Canadian band from Winnipeg. Um, they've been around since 1998, uh, seven albums on the back of their shoulder. Uh, coming soon with uh, great news as well. And uh, one of, from my point of view, the most iconic noise rock band. If we can actually call it noise rock band, but we're going to actually ask a few questions about that uh, to yeah. Jess um, year round. Uh, so, Jess, how are you doing? How are you? Oh, uh, I guess all things considered, I'm, I'm doing okay. It's a very busy time right now, even though it shouldn't be. Uh, usually in the summer, most people get to take holidays and there's a bit of a downtick and I'm just not experiencing that. I'm, I'm in full on album uh, promotion mode and dealing with a whole bunch of other things with our other business that we deal with. So I'm stressed out. <laughs> How are you? How, how's uh, some wait, I mean, I, honestly, in, in between like work and uh, interviewing and uh, just doing things around, I'm stressed out too. I, even if I don't look like, actually I do look like. <laughs> I'm just lying to myself. I just lying to myself. Yeah. So yeah, um, we were talking about actually you at the moment, guys. You are in the process of uh, releasing a new album. Uh, it's been a lo- long journey. I mean, like the latest one was actually blessed from 2018, uh, which was a, an absolute punch in the face. And afterwards was a hiatus, and I believe there was a, even for whatever is up, was happening around the world. I mean, like with the pandemic and everything else. Um, yeah. Regarding Noel, which is coming really soon, I reckon. Um, do you guys been recording during lockdown and uh, just scrapping down material? This is something really fresh. Well, how is it being created? Um, that's kind of a long story. Um, we started trying to write material again near the end of 2019, and actually the very beginning of 2020. Our bassist Scott lives in a city that's a province over from ours. So it's about an eight, eight or nine hour drive from where we live. So mm-hmm. we'd had him in a couple times in January of 2020 and then March of 2020. And we just started writing material again. And as soon as the pandemic hit, I threw all that material in the garbage. <laughs> <laughs> Completely from scratch again, just, I mean, we all experienced what was going on. It was just an emotional clusterfuck and none of the material we were working on before the pandemic felt relevant to me anymore. So I, I started the process by teaching myself how to record on my computer at home, which I'd kind of flirted with the concept of it in 2007. But like technologically speaking, things have changed a huge amount in the last 13 years. Like back then, if you loaded something like Pro Tools on a laptop, like an, your average office laptop, it would kind of overwhelm the whole system and freeze it up. So I didn't get very far many years ago, but now like all the technology is so easy to use that I taught myself how to program MIDI instruments, um, recording with uh, amp- amplifier simulators. And it only took me like a month or two to get pretty decent at it. So we started demoing material on my computer and by the time we were actually allowed to get back in a room together, I'd written a whole bunch of songs on my own. So we spent the majority of the pandemic, at least 2020 and 2021, writing material that way on my computer, demoing it all, fine tuning everything. So by the time we actually got to record in the fall of 2021, we had two albums worth of material that we recorded. Um, I'll do the and also actually pandemic was it impacting to um uh, the writing i mean like um, you you believe that literally everything is happening emotionally as we would say is uh you you can recognize the difference in between what happened before in blessed and everything is happening now yeah i mean there's there's certainly commonalities and um we took what we have done and continued to build on it there i feel like there's more jazz influence there's now a new semi-industrial feel to some of the songs because I started buying Moog synthesizers. Um, 
so that we just the whole point of this project is to continuously build from where we once were because like we're not making a lot of money off of this it's it's all an ego project i i just want to feel like i'm doing something making music that means something to me and i'm never satisfied very long with any one thing so it's it's a constantly evolving process even with the way i approach new music like i i I'm not one of those people who laments the early aughts of uh, 2000s metalcore or anything like that. I, I, granted, there are good bands from my past, but like I'm always looking forward. I always want to know what's pissing off 20-year-olds and the music that they're making as a response to it. Because let's be real, all the best music is generally made by people of those age brackets, and they're putting a fresh spin on things. So you just got to try and keep up, right? Yeah, absolutely. How do you deal with um, uh, the shrinking of um, attention from the newest generation? You know, this kind of uh, TikTok 30 seconds and so on. How do you feel like a band that is releasing like full album or full length on uh, Spotify or any kind of digital platform? Yeah, good question. We'll see how we deal with that. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've tried to make a TikTok. I don't, I don't think I'm doing it right. But at the same time, I don't know if we necessarily translate very well into that. Um, but, I mean, you just you, you try to create content that may be engaging to those types of, of consumers. And in the end, all you can hope is that they go check out the Spotify and listen to a whole song all the way through. Um, there will always be people who like to consume albums. And I think a lot of the, the types of people who listen to music like what we make and, and the, the uh, community that we are a part of, I very much believe that people still like to listen to full albums because it's, it's telling a story. It's like watching a movie, right? Yeah, absolutely. I completely agree with you. And regarding the label I was saying before, because if you're searching like online, you can literally say, um, the first thing actually you see like for Cam Mode uh, is basically a noise rock band. Do you actually really identify with that? Because I believe though that the kind of uh, label is really like shrinking completely with the complexity of the sound and the kind of uh, research that you guys have been doing so far, isn't it? Yeah, I, I, we've never really known what to call ourselves since day one because we've never been a straight up noise rock band. Um, when we first formed, I know people considered us too hardcore for metal, too metal for hardcore, and too much of everything for Namby Pamby noise rock fans. So that that was I, I I can't remember who said that in the first place, but it was someone reviewing our first record, and it's never really changed to be honest. Like there are some people who still kind of expect us to be like a metallic hardcore influence type band like bands like botch or converge but we've we've always been way too noise rock for a lot of those types of bands fans anyway and when it comes to metal yeah i mean we're probably still too noise rock for that but generally speaking for most like noise rock purists we're too heavy and too arguably too aggressive for a lot of those people too because we definitely draw from a lot of extreme metal. So we, we it's been funny because the older we get, the less peers we actually have in, in this overarching musical community. So I don't know, we'll just continue doing what we do and hope that people continue to enjoy it. If, 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 right? <laughs> Uh, I mean, like you guys don't change, please. I mean, like I'm gonna be completely disappointed. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I'm gonna just gonna drop an unfollow on Spotify. And yeah. Spotify. <laughs> but yeah. Um, so the news that were like that nearly is confirmed always gonna come back at the end of 2022, as you said, isn't it? Yeah, September 23rd, it's coming out. So we've already got the the first single, a love letter, which came out last month, and we actually have a new single coming out in like an hour. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> like, yeah. I will check it out like straight away as soon as we finish. Like, okay, thank you very much. I'm just gonna go and check it out. And um, talking about love letter, um, coming out the tenth of June, right? If I'm not wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I heard like it doesn't really sound like a love letter. Uh, there's a lot of sarcasm around there. I found a lot, a lot of abuse and toxicity. Even if we're reading some of the lyrics, yeah, uh, throughout we meeting that, 
uh, there is like it was a mistake to ask me for help and I'm a student of predators and so on. Um, what's the meaning behind that? I mean, like um, it's been weird to identify what you really want to discuss about in this love letter. This is uh, actually our the people who work for doing publicity for this record asked me to elaborate on the lyrics and uh, I politely declined because it's one of those songs the way we wrote it is kind of irrelevant and the subject matter is also irrelevant to me because I want people to place these words however they feel fit within the context of their own lives because I know people have felt the sting of those types of sentiments throughout the last two years and they've got someone that they want to say things like that to and that's kind of the whole point of the song and you're right the the, the love letter uh tag as the title is is definitely a sarcastic tongue-in-cheek joke regarding the whole contents of that song yeah absolutely because i went straight away into abuse i don't know because i'm i mean like a I wouldn't consider myself an abuser. I mean, I just call my partner about that, but uh, I just reconnected for a certain words that literally will, will drag me there. But I recognize, and actually, uh, thank you very much for sharing the way actually it's being constructed. I believe, though, they will stimulate different kind of feelings with different kind of personal that's changing my mind. My mind. Yeah. And this one and I, a, sorry, that's, the, that, that's the stuff I have a lot of fun writing lyrics for. When, when people can apply them to different things, and it, even... I've seen with other songs on this album misinterpretations of what's been said. So it's it never ceases to be fascinating to find out how people react to the words we've written, particularly knowing where the words first came from. <laughs> it's that's that's the beauty of art, the uh, the relativity of interpretation. True. Regarding the um, lineup at the moment, right, uh, and I'm going later for the add-on that happened, like the fourth component of the band, but um, how is you playing with your brother? I mean, oh, like, it's, uh, always, it's always been great. I mean, <laughs> it's it's funny because long long-standing bands, you always see, generally speaking, there are like anchors that hold the thing together. And we never could have kept this together if not for, for him and I being the anchors of this band. So... Um, yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's nice to have people in your corner that you can trust. And that's, that's the long and short of how it is working with my brother. Plus he's a damn good drummer. Yeah. It's a great drummer. I'm not... <laughs> like, yeah, it is. Um, so you never argue things like that. I mean, like, you never like, uh, get a like, get off my face. I'm not, I'm always here <laughs> more about, oh shit, we have a family thing or something. <laughs> We're going to see each other anyway. At this point, not, not really. Um, I mean, sometimes you have disagreements, but like within the context of this band, they're few and far between, especially like in 2022, me being 40 years old and him 38, like we can civilly discuss things without anything getting heated. So I'm just going to, this is what it's supposed to be, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, we're, we're both well, adults. <laughs> So we were talking about the four element actually joined recently, right? Um, which yeah. is uh, uh, Catherine, right? Catherine has been joining with the saxophone, piano, synths, percussion, background voice. Uh, why was the choice actually to get another uh, instrument into the new album? I mean, obviously, though, what I've been listening to, uh, Love Letter, is a, a, a great add on. I mean, it, it brings a lot of value to the song. Um, yeah, yeah. It's a completely different, it seems like a completely different kind of project. Is I felt some some kind of similarity. I wouldn't say like to cut the rim somehow. You know what they do? It's kind of really sharp cut in between like these small industrial parts. Um, something actually you can fill in forever. But yeah, um, why do you guys decide actually to bring someone else on board? Um, we'd thrown the idea around on the last record because she played saxophone on our loved record too, but she was only on three songs. And it, it didn't really make sense to bring her on tour for maybe playing two songs in a set. Um, so I had that in the back of my mind as I started experimenting with synthesizers and wanting to incorporate more instrumentation in the band. And the fact that I was demoing everything on my own, own at home, I was able to fit more different kinds of parts and instruments into the songs because I actually was able to like 
cross-reference and make sure that things actually worked. Um, so now that we had all these extra parts that needed to be played, we just kind of lucked out that she was able to play piano uh, and synthesizer while also being a saxophone player because now we can have one person do like eight different kinds of parts. So we've uh, actually, we just finished two days ago. We had the whole band together and we practiced every day for a week um, because we've been changing our set to feature her as the fourth instrumentalist on it. So it, uh, it took some work to create synthesizer and saxophone parts for the old songs, but it, uh, it was very rewarding in the end because now we have a, a new heavy, heavy new set full of all kinds of new material. So it's, it's going to be very exciting to debut this stuff live. So we actually, you're going to be bringing like the old song live, the old song having an, an adaptation with, uh, the, with her. Wow, this is fantastic. I'm yeah, like, <laughs> I'm really jealous that she's like in the seats right away. But um, to, talking about touring though, uh, where you guys already have set up something for EU and UK, we're trying. I'm not, and I'm not gonna lie, I'm nervous about traveling over there right now. Seeing what's been happening to bands with airlines, where I swear, like everyone I see that's doing summer tours is having their instruments lost by the baggage handlers which scares the hell out of me like i don't want to lose my gear <laughs> and have that last minute scramble so i don't know how that's going to end up playing out whether that's going to improve because we we were trying to slate to do something in europe in march of next year so i guess we'll see if that happens someone answering that yes you have to take it's all right no worries no take your time no, no, I'm just, I got to get the phone out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fine, no worries. You have to take it, it's cool. Uh, so, yeah, um, lost instruments around Europe. This sounds really fascinating. I just thinking about those, the you know, baggage handle, they're just uh, completely sending somewhere else. So I hope it's not <laughs> happening. But, yeah, we, we want to see you in Italy. We want to see you in, uh, obviously, I want to see you in UK because I'm not in Italy anymore. I mean, London. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, it would be lovely to have you done that. Yeah, we've been in Italy, have you, in the past? Yeah, we played uh, several shows uh, over the years. I know we usually play Milano, but yeah. I think we've played some other ones, too, uh, on a couple tours. We've delved a little bit further into the country, but, oh, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's hard to get out there a lot of the time because it's more expensive to fly, and everything is just so cost-heavy. And, like, right now with the way Shane and Mai's company is, it's it's tricky to take time away so i'm uh, i'm a little nervous right now even about the the dates we have planned in north america whether or not the workload will overwhelm us but there's only one way to find out <laughs> just go for it and that's it yeah you guys are just touring by bus when you go around the us so that would be like a long ride and things like that you're just flying yeah in, in the us we have our own van and trailer so we, we have to drive ourselves. We, we can't afford to bring a, a driver or anything like that. So it's uh, we're still very much a DIY punk band in that regard. Cool. That sounds like a journey, in particular around the US, if you have to <laughs> cross, uh, uh, you know, go across. Like, sounds really long, sounds really like tiring, but you will see how it goes, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, when to just talk about, um, obviously, uh, one of the um, kind of uh, a listener that actually is introduced to your music, guys, you can uh, appreciate because as for me, it's appreciating like the the sharpness, the violence as well, and as well as the heaviness of certain sound as you explained before. Uh, what we we're talking about the categorizing uh, thing, which is that uh, why do we even categorize music anyway. I don't understand. But yeah, I think just to give a definition, sometimes you categorize just to say like uh, it's in this square, but doesn't apply that much anymore but um do you believe though and uh, this is a question actually i'm asking to everyone in this format um that there's still a need for a, or a meaning for a, a protest music right now or uh, an extreme violence explanation i mean explosion into the music itself um is there still a need for that uh i mean i feel like very much so or am i misinterpreting the question here um, I'm just asking, though, if the um, protest music, 
as well as a violent music. It's still oh, like chess a, music. Yeah. Okay, I missed that part of it. Um, yeah. I mean, I I obviously, uh, as someone who's very much invested in that style, I definitely feel that it has more of a place than ever before, um, particularly with with the nature of communication and the width and uh, breadth of it in that we can reach more people than ever via the internet, I think music as a form of protest is potentially more important than ever because we are constantly consuming media for all walks of culture and it's easier to reach people than ever. So um, in, in prior generations when, when that, when people tried to utilize music as a, a method of protest, I, I feel like, I mean, it was very um, effective even then. And you'd argue it's, it's far more effective now because of the way we can basically grab people's attention through all different mediums at this point. Like people can, we, we we're not really relegated to just an album or a live show anymore. Like people follow their favorite bands on TikTok and Instagram and all, all the different platforms. So you're, you can be inundated with the message all the time, which I'd argue is maybe not very healthy, but that's, that's another discussion, right? Why is not really healthy for your point of view for, um, I mean, like we're talking about social media and we actually we utilize social media at the moment and the way actually is influencing our life as well. Yeah. And I mean, that's actually the song that's coming out today is about that. <laughs> you can actually tell us the name of the song, isn't it? It's called, but they respect my tactics, but the, uh, the yeah, the, the message very much has to do with the, the way we're all kind of being held hostage right now. And, uh, it's a very existential view on uh, humanity and communication and where we're at socially right now. What question I actually wanted to ask about city coming from. So Winnipeg is about 700,000 people, isn't it? Um, yeah, seven, around, seven to 800. I think it's, it's around 800 now. 800 now. Okay, cool. That was, uh, the data I was checking actually was from 2017. So I reckon, yeah. um, you know, humans have been like purifying anyway. Um, what I want to ask, like, there's a lot of protest music. There's a lot of like really heavy music happening there. So is that actually something happening in Winnipeg that we don't see? That that this kind of uh, you know subgenre subculture is happening. Why there is a lot of uh, really extreme music happening in that? I think it's just a nature of isolation of where we are. We're pretty far from anything. Um, in terms of cities with a million or more people, the closest U.S. city is Minneapolis, Minnesota, which is about an eight-hour drive away. And the closest city in Canada is Calgary, which is about a 15-hour drive away. So historically, especially from the 90s through the early 2000s, we didn't get a lot of touring packages driving through here. So we largely had to entertain ourselves. And I think probably the proximity to cities like Minneapolis who had a, obviously a very strong noise rock scene and with stuff like amphetamine reptile and, and things like that. We've, we've always had a little bit of trickle down from that where we had fairly interesting and intelligent, heavy music coming out of Winnipeg. Um, and in terms of like the political side of things, like the band Propagandies from Winnipeg and they formed must have been late 80s early 90s so that that's always been something that's been looming because like they're one of the the legendary punk hardcore bands in terms of having a far left message baked into their entire package so a lot of the the musicians in the city just grew up listening to that band so i i feel like that's that's definitely a huge influence on on the entire scene here you never felt about to go away for the reason of the isolation and just go in a bigger city or you'd like to, to be to be now? Yeah. I would, just, this is my home. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, historically it's been cheap to live here too, so that's why we, we just never left. Sounds good. I mean, like, yeah, if it's your own, if you feel good where you are, I mean, like, it doesn't really matter if it's a 10,000 inhabitants or 3 million of. I mean, yeah, maybe the less is better, isn't it? <laughs> a lot of the time, yeah. And I mean, good is subjective too, right? A lot of people who end up 
leaving hor like bad cities like this one feel just as bad in a major center. So, eh. I just want to be able to do what I do, and this city makes it easier to do to a degree. Other than the drives are horrible, but okay. So, so it's good to me. I mean, honestly, uh, it looks like is it is is a good place where if you actually want to see a couple of shows. I mean, like if locals actually do like a couple of shows look look like a really good place to be. So hey, it's what if he's home, it's fine. Yeah, um, exactly. Yes. Um. Thank you very much for your time. Um. Thank you for. Uh, being part of a uh, rock nation uh, for this uh, set of interviews, which they're regarding we have um, extreme music and so on. Um, I wish you all the best for the release of the um, single that actually is happening now, as well Thank as you very much. The, release of, the release of the album, which is happening really soon. So re let's remind us about 21st of September, isn't it? Yes, yeah, September 23, the uh, Artifact Records. Yeah, so it's it's what two months away, so it's very soon. We've been uh, waiting for long, my friend. We've been waiting for long. I'm not gonna yeah. lie. You're telling me we uh, we submitted all the final masters and artwork back in January. So I've been just sitting on this thing for months, wanting people to hear it. But yeah, it's that whole vinyl delay thing that's making yes. the industry not very fun. It's killing it. It's killing it. Absolutely. Right. Thank you very much for your time, Doc. All the best. Cool. Thank you very much. And it was good talking to you, sir. Cheers, man. Speak to you soon. Ciao. Take care. Later.